Hi everyone. Welcome to Thought Leadership Show by Quadrant Knowledge Solutions. Our thought leadership show with series of episodes where we invite thought leaders, industry leaders, technology influencer, and they address our questioners on leadership lessons, priorities, innovations, empowerment, and emerging trends for the benefit of society at large. Today, we would like to welcome Mr. Darren Endel, CEO of Device Authority. Thank you, Darren, for being on the show. Darren is an extensive, experienced, and specialized leader in security and analytics software and services. He is currently serving as CEO as Device Authority, a company that focuses on helping organizations protect themselves from cyber attacks. Prior to his CEO uh, role at Device Authority, Darren was CEO at Absence, where Darren guided the company to 270% increase in revenue, more than 100, mil, uh, 100 million USD. That's commandable, Darren, really good. Expanded the company globally, increased uh, global headcount by more than 300% and helped Epsense raise $70 million investment from Goldman Sachs. Prior to Epsense, Darren was CEO with Wisdom. Before that, he was managing director at Ultima Business Solutions and sales director at Digital Equipment Company. Darren, I must say, like I think more than two decades of experience you're holding and your journey has been really, really great. I have seen the articles published and I have seen your public uh, speaking articles as well. So uh, our today's discussion, Darren, it will be focused on important learnings from your experience, your leadership priorities, challenges in today's volatile market scenario, and transforming the work management, the importance of data-driven decision making. So uh, how we are going to do is I have a list of questions where I'll be talking, I'll be asking you the questions, and we'll be talking about those uh, uh, scenarios after that we'll be going on the emerging trends on IoT securities as well. Yes, well, thank you very much for the introduction you gave me. And uh, I guess I, I sound very old when you went through some of the things I've done in the past. So hopefully I don't come over too old on the interview. But I will bring to fair and answer your questions in the best way I can with my experience. And, you know, I've got, I guess, a broader view of some of the questions, but also a more specific view based on my current role at uh, device authorities, some I think are relevant. You know, specifically to, the, to that market that we operate in. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. So uh, Darren, you maintain a big journey in range of business and global European UK regions. And I think uh, currently you are based in uh, US, California. So would you like to spot essential learnings from your experience, Darren? Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, so I'm actually physically based in the UK uh, at Device Authority, but I'm in California as we speak doing this uh, this session. I, I think just, to t I guess, a few key points just along my my learnings is um, when you th when you think about global coverage, whether it's European, UK or, or North America, I think one of the first and foremost, it's always about how you cover those geos and, and how you construct your uh, teams and the people that you have in those teams, because you and I, so, so people is a really important thing. I think it's also very important that whilst at one level you do have you know global markets and you know I work for a software company now where you know we have a global market and as I've done in previous roles but how how do you really focus on the global opportunity but you also must absolutely focus and double down on the regional opportunity because every region has its own challenges uh, you know whether that's channels whether that's people whether that's cultures whether that's compliance needs um, you know, or even government uh, and, and regulatory requirements. So global versus regional, I think, is another thing to, you know, to very much think about. And, and, and you know, the question is quite broad that you gave me. Um, if you don't focus, you can become very stretched very quickly. One thing I've learned is lots of people always have lots of great ideas. And every idea normally has 30 actions or more attached to it, and it stretches you very, very quickly. So if you're in a smaller company, you need to be really focused and, you know, I guess, fail fast. Uh, and, and, and but stay absolutely focused and on message and on plan. Uh, and I guess on that point, make sure you do have a plan. If I was to take a view, you know, when I look now at device authority, um, one thing I've noticed, well, we see in our market, you know, for IoT security specifically, there isn't one vendor that can solve 
the challenges that customers have. So understanding that end-to-end -end answer is, is a complex challenge for customers. So you need to be able to help your customers and work with partners, uh, you know, very much focusing on, on, on that approach. So not one vendor can solve it. So, you know, smart customers take an ecosystem approach, look at what type of vendors they need in their ecosystem or in their stack or solution portfolio. But I think, you know, as vendors, we also need to do the same and take that approach, especially with IoT. You know, I think that the breadth and depth of the challenges and, and the opportunity for companies to help resolve some or part of that is is the complex thing, how you pull all that together. So uh, people need to figure think through that. I'll pause. That's, that's really good to know. And I could see you're very customer and people centric. And it's it's really good to know about like, you no know, uh, things you have learned in your experience and we are getting to know. So moving on to next question, it is adopting to modern day and future pace of change is a challenge for many enterprise leaders today. What do you what is your observation and recommendations on this area? Yeah, that is a really good question. Um, and, you know, as a CEO, I, I guess I've learned through. You know, the, the three decades effectively that I've been operating in this industry and um, you know, when you work at a startup or as a, an evolving startup and a successful, well-recognized startup by, you know, analysts at Device Authority like I am now, one thing, you know, things I've learned there or I, or I apply very much what I've learned in the past, working at slightly larger organizations, but I think, you know, they're still fundamentally uh, uh, the same. One thing I would say, if you, if you just think through the people concept, um, if, if you need to drive change, and the rate of change is accelerating, which I've seen in the industry, you absolutely need to ensure that you incubate uh, resources. Uh, so that's people uh, and, and, and provide some form for people to be able to innovate. So whether that's in R&D, make sure you've got leadership funds, whether, make sure you've got people who are focused on the innovation piece. Uh, you, you can't just allow everyone to do their day jobs and think they've got time to be able to innovate. If you do that, your rate of change and success will probably be slow. So that's one thing I would do. You also have to be brave. Uh, I think the smaller the, com the smaller the company you are, the braver you have to be. You need good investment or good investors to help support that being brave. But you need to back ideas. And that doesn't mean back every idea, like I said before. You know, work through collaborative um, methods internally with, with your right technical or innovation leaders. But back ideas that you decide to back as a group, but make sure you focus on them, invest in them, and you fail fast if you're gonna fail. Don't fail by uh, being on that on that journey too long. So I think collaboration is really important, uh, you know, and I think it also, you know, it touches on what I said before. You can collaborate also with your ecosystem, some which are potential partners and some are in some spaces uh, competition. So collaboration is also important. And I think, you know, building out the right partners, the channels and the ecosystem is also really important to be able to drive uh, 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 change and then make sure you've got, you know, good backing of investors to, uh, to do that. I think it is an impossible challenge, though, to keep pace with all technological change. So make sure you understand the market you're in, the difference you can make and how you augment your position. Uh, and, and fundamentally, you know, make sure that you're solving uh, or bringing out new ideas, recommendations um, that customers will ultimately buy into. Yes, I completely agree. Like understanding a particular market, planning a proper strategy and collaborating for a perfect growth is always necessary in a business. So uh, you have rightly uh, said this. So uh, you have a massive experience in strategy, growth plan, operations associated areas. What do you think have been uh, have to be management priorities for using innovation based growth, scaling up technologies and scaling up technological businesses? That's a really good question. And in a way, you just answered it in your summary of the previous question. But in my experience is you need to build a strategic plan, uh, you know, and, and you need a plan that has clear strategies not too many you know you, you go through an iterative process but make sure you've got you know a number of key st strategic activities uh, or, or strategies that are supported by clear activities and actions and you need owners and it comes back to the team you, if you have a strategy that's not aligned to the people you'll fail if you don't have owners or the resources or the investment aligned to those strategies you'll fail so you know i think you need to back the team and then back the individuals in the organization to be able to execute um and, and i often think of you know a plan 
a, a simple rule is like you know 70 20 10 um 70 percent of your plan you know you've got key initiatives 20 percent is the stretch where you've got a number of key things you're looking to do like you know what's dot next or where do you need to extend your offering or extend your market position and then the 10 is very much and so whilst the 20 might be assigned to a roadmap and those are things you've decided you're expanding on you know the 10 is all around the, the think tank piece and the ideas piece and some of those long range things you might invest in um so you think of it 70 20 to 10 in terms of your decision making and maybe your investment profile about how you would do that right right thank you so much so uh, what do you think about future of work darren how can global organizations transform work uh, space management to embrace change while taking care of improving and maintaining high security levels yeah well that's a great question you <laughs> know we I think following well during COVID and now following you know the COVID outbreak as everyone starts to get back to normal except the normal is a new normal is something that we're all trying to figure out. Um, I, I, I did see a quote uh, from I think it was Google where and I, and I read it out actually I think it's quite compelling. It's no longer just about protecting information or restricting how that information is accessed. It's about building safe, efficient and effective ways to facilitate information sharing and that was from Michael Carner the chief workspace evangelist at Google um you know and I think that sort of says a lot uh, and so I think you know as leaders we have to think about things in a different way we have to create more inclusive uh ways of doing things more more use more collaborative tools make sure that we are talking with employees and giving them good guidance and letting them know um you know to, about boundaries um, I think it's good to be transparent, you know, be open and honest about what can be used, what can be tracked, make sure people understand the modern workforce uh, or the modern workplace and offer tools, you know, mostly digital tools that, that you know, we use Teams today as, as well as Zoom, as well as email, as well as lots of development assets and tools. But all of those are like protected, collaborative workspaces. And I guess the bigger the company you are, the more you tend to have. But I would encourage, you know, culture is one of those things. You talk about workspace or, or work management and people, you know, we need to invest in, I guess, establishing a new culture as a new hybrid workplace um, comes into practice. We need to help perhaps train, guide people on setting boundaries. Um, you know, a good example would be, you know, why is everyone then might people work, work from home or their hours extend? But, you know, when are their core hours, non-core hours? Um, you know, what devices do they use, you know, when they're working? You know, we, should we really allow everyone to use all personal devices for work all the time? Because then it becomes a complete mix between personal and, uh, I guess, home life. Um, we have a young workforce that hasn't always worked in a, in a strict office environment. So being able to guide them, you know, about core working hours, whether they're nine till five, whether they're, you know, 10 till six, whether they're six till eight, every company would be different and then clearly companies have 24 7 coverage that they need to operate as well as global time zones but you know giving people the ability to have all of applications on their phones for example is something that most people do for their consumer life but do we want that um for uh, their business life so i think understanding some of those challenges but being collaborative um trying to in generate i guess a new culture where people are invested in protecting and securing that data but also the work practices because all of these things you know very much uh, overlap so I, I, it's not easy but I what I would say is and I touched on it but it's around people and teams and you need to use good platforms use the platforms people want to use embrace the people in those decisions uh, and you know try and do that as much as possible in terms of going forward Truly said to a fair being of numerous risk and importance of security, accurate security is really essential. So completely agree, uh, Darren. So you often emphasize, I have seen like uh, in public forums and uh, talks, you have emphasized a lot on significance of security first method when it comes to IoT devices. So can you uh, uh, tell us more about this vision? Yeah, so and I think, you know, specifically that's tied to, I guess, the market that we operate in. Um, you know, I think one of the things it, it it's definitely been a market that is educating and learning uh, as it goes. I think one of the things around security is everyone 
talks about it, but not everyone does it. Uh, and I think, you know, we've seen, you know, through our existence as a company and, and building out the partnerships and the ecosystem that we have. But, you know, it isn't until you start working with the end customers and you understand the challenges that they have. So, you know, very much security first approach. It, it is, you know, you hear words like security by design. So building in the security foundation in the chips or in the motherboards and the devices before they become active in operation. Uh, you know, and deployed. And I think, you know, that really talks to a whole supply chain of chip vendors, IP companies, um, board manufacturers, uh, distributors who aggregate these boards and chips, the supply chain, you know, through. So so it, 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 it really means many things, but fundamentally trying to build in the thinking into the architecture of those chips, boards and devices, I think is really important. And people talk about security by design or secure manufacturing. You know, we work with a number of customers who, who are looking to insert, you know, identities or services that help manage identities through the life cycle of their product out through, you know, through their supply chain to their ultimate customers. So that's becoming really important. And I think there's a number of, um, you know, I guess, areas that that touches so like i said secure by design secure manufacturing and then there's the understanding well how do you actually deal with that through the whole life cycle of that product which could change owners which could end up doing different things or that could be you know deprovisioned and reprovisioned so how do you manage that so there's a, there's a whole plethora you know about that we have a um, i mean at device authority we work with a broad ecosystem we and we deal with a number of um, companies. In fact, in California, when I'm over there this week, I'll be meeting with some of those. But we've tried to document a lot of this into our IoT uh, technical insight guide, our security blueprint. that's available on our website that really talks end to end and how you can think about this security first approach, the secure by design, secure manufacturing. So the earlier stage, but also some of the bigger challenges that you then need to figure out. Oh, if you've actually done that but also if you haven't because most companies can't just rip up what they've already done they can't just write off the devices that they've made or the investments they've made they need the ability to think through how do you bring in you know that concept into uh it, deploying and expanding security into that security first approach but also how do you retrofit or solve the problem where you didn't do that originally because people will have a combination of different devices or different solutions in the IoT world. So how, how how do you do that? So it's really important. But I would I would emphasize that even though you take a security first approach, that isn't the answer to dealing with security through the life cycle of your project. So it's so it's an important step, but it fundamentally it, it isn't the answer. Great. I completely get it. Yes. So, um, uh, Darren, uh, with all these digital surroundings and emerging digital trends, can you throw some light on cybersecurity trends that you think are going to emerge in subsequent few years? Yeah. Um, well, I think, and we've seen a lot of this, I think, take real shape in the last six months. So, there's definitely been the me uh, a paradigm shift and a real game change. But you know, if you look at some of the you know, so cyber security trends you know to think about zero trust has become very prevalent and very relevant and i think that will continue to be the benchmark you know zero trust never trust always verify uh and so that will be the benchmark i think that governments uh and actually you see you know new standards so um you know you've got you've seen the biden executive order talking about the s-bomb to understanding the components so you can trust the device you saw the eu last week or 10 days or so come out with a new um, cyber law that effectively associates itself with the Biden order and their version of that. So more compliance driving those type of things. So I see zero trust becoming very relevant. I think critical infrastructure will continue to be um, you know, really important. So you know how people look to manage and deploy uh, and secure critical infrastructure. And I think you know medical is another element of that because I think you've got critical things in government, uh, but also you've got you know, critical infrastructure deployed in the medical world because that affects effectively people uh, and, you know, people's safety uh, and how people may or may not survive if things are, you know, tampered with in terms of uh, medical needs. Um, but I think the most successful approaches to cyber security are really the ones that take an ecosystem approach. I've touched on this before. And I think you see that broken out in stages and phases from like NIST 
for example, where people in their framework, they talk about identify, protect, detect, respond and recover. And I think, you know, you have to think of it on those stages. There isn't a one size fits fits all. You have to think through those stages and you have to think about how you work with technology platforms and companies who effectively, you know, uh, enable you to do that. Um, but I think you've got, you know, new things uh, on the horizon. People have been figuring out already how do we out, how do we solve device challenges outside the firewall with no humans? Um, and so you've got legacy OT things you need to figure out. That isn't going to go away. I mean, daily we all we're, we're having conversations with people who are still trying to figure that out. So it, you know, I think you're overlaying new things as well as the legacy of, of old things, and so that that will continue to be a problem. Um, and, and I guess you've got you know new new phenomenons coming along, things like quantum and quantum encryption. That's that seems to be getting a lot of attention in the press. Whilst it's still fully, you know, years away, I think it it won't be long. Uh, it will be fully needed, and people need to start figuring out, you know, about new standards for you know for quantum encryption and how and how that will play a significant impact. Um, and, and I do see that becoming a very a significant topic of conversation. Uh, you know, we see you know in industry events and some of the research papers that are, you know that are coming up. But so just some other stuff. So I think quantum is one of the areas. Um, I think 5G, as people look to you know, use 5G, there are potentially more vulnerabilities. Uh, giving people really the, you know, with transfer speeds, it gives people uh, an ability to be able to be a bad guy um, before it's even recognised because so much more data is going to be you travelling much more far, much faster. You know, so how will you actually track that there has been some compromise? Uh, you know, so I think 5G has its own challenges to work out. Um, and, and I also heard, you know, and it's, I think it's worth just mentioning synthetic identities, you know, is also, you know, among one of the growing areas in the US. There's been a tendency to expand or for fraud effectively and scammers to combine real and fake data to create a new identity uh, to defraud people financially. And so, you know, I think it, it, it's not just one or the other. It's now the combination of those both. So these crimes are, uh, are are easier when performed online or using credit card, uh, but you know we should think about that as more digital identities get involved in that type of transaction. So, you know, I guess analysts like yourself warn about some of the emergence of some of these new technologies. But synthetic identities is a new thing, you know. I think worth uh, watching and, and considering. Thanks, Darren. Really, this is very insightful and I completely agree like no with this emerging digital uh, transformation each day we are coming up with new technologies and the digital surroundings and our tech service are altering each single day. So it is essential to be aware of numerous risks and importance of accurate security solutions to combat these cyber attacks. So yeah, uh, yeah. thank you so much uh, Darren. So with this, we conclude this thought leadership series today and thank you for throwing light on important insights and these will be very helpful for leadership groups of the companies to know how important spending on security today will be beneficial to save multi folds tomorrow. So thank you so much Darren once again and we look forward to interact with you more in near future. Thank you Renan, hopefully it was useful. Thanks for your time.